Talon Metals is all over the news right now, given the announcement of a supply agreement with Tesla, in which Tesla commits to buying 75,000 tons of nickel concentrate from them over a period of the next six years. So does this news make Talon Metals a good investment? My initial reaction was no, but after looking into their strategy, I'm of the opinion that this has exciting potential. But a lot of qualification is still needed, which I will elaborate on in this video. As always, what follows is my opinion and is not investment advice. At face value, it seems Talon has an excellent situation here. A locked-in supply agreement with a major producer at a price reportedly linked to the London Metals Exchange spot price for nickel. Now, I'm a bit skeptical of this pricing, but will clarify my skepticism later. First, I want to address a question. Why does Talon even need a deal? I mean, if they are capable of producing the EV world's most sought-after metal in any sort of quantity, literally every battery manufacturer on Earth is going to be fighting off all the others to get their supply. Well, there might be a very compelling reason for this. And to understand it, we need a little bit more background information. Talon is a junior miner, but that classification is being generous. It does not have an active mine. What they have, thanks to some incredibly complex deals that, to be honest, I still haven't quite got my head around yet, is the right to mine a 31,000 acre piece of land in Minnesota, situated around a town called Tamarack. The property is split into two projects, creatively called Tamarack North and Tamarack South. And that is about it. That is all there is, literally. But let's give credit where credit is due. Talon has done what is known as a technical report for the Tamarack South property. They finished it in 2018, but it would seem that Tamarack North is more interesting since this is the one getting all the attention right now. Technical reports are the first step in a multi-stage process for building the business case for a mine. And I think you can see where I'm going with this. Mining is an incredibly complicated business. It takes years just to draw up the business plan. Nickel mining is a very complex process, consisting of a number of phases. When you dig up the rock, it consists of around 0.4% nickel. Actually, Talon's ore bodies are higher. They are citing around 1% nickel in the rock, which as hard as it might be to believe, is excellent. Now, because you are currently sitting with 1% nickel and say 99% rock, you kind of want to do as much refining on site as possible to limit transportation costs. The end result of these initial steps is a nickel concentrate. Only it isn't nickel yet, you see. It's kind of like an acid-infused sludge with around 10% nickel in it. Much cheaper to transport than the 100 tons of rock, but still not much use for a battery manufacturer. And you're left with 99 tons of acid-infused rock and wastewater, which is really what all the fuss is about. And I'm just going to pause on this point right away. Because this is what happened to the last poor bastards that tried to mine nickel in Minnesota. Two long-standing mineral rights leases that are critical for a large proposed underground copper nickel mine in northeastern Minnesota will not be renewed. And score one point here for Talon Metals. Actually, maybe two points. The Tamarack ore body is made up of lithium sulfides and not the other unpronounceable stuff that the nickel mines usually get all excited about. This stuff is apparently easier to work with, so less goo. Talon's plan is to stick all the waste back in the hole they dug, only they will line the walls with concrete first to stop it seeping into the groundwater. I'm a bit skeptical here. Anyone who has ever owned a swimming pool will know all about the joys of cracked concrete walls. And this is worse, since the walls will be all the way underground. But there are some clever engineers on board, and let's have faith in their ingenuity, and pray that there are no earthquakes in Minnesota. And the community appears to be in support of this. So back to the concentrate. It needs to get refined further, and the traditional techniques called for smelting, which further concentrates the nickel, and then final refining in what is referred to as London Metal Exchange grade nickel, the premium stuff. For some reason or other, for battery manufacturers, this nickel then gets converted into nickel sulfate. More on this point later. Now there are no refineries in the USA. They all sit in Canada. This has been flagged as a strategic imperative by the Biden administration. So another point for Talon Metals. Assuming you have faith in the folks at Capitol Hill all coming to an agreement on this stuff. Now let's get back to where Talon is in the process. For Tamarack North, Talon have gone a step further and have done what is known as a Preliminary Economic Assessment, or PEA for short. Really what this involves is taking a giant drill and drilling into the rock at various spots in the entire property, 
in order to assess the ore quality, grade, and quantity. This is a really laborious process and time-consuming. They started the process in 2018 and have provided their third update so far. Now, the plan so far calls for a $650 million plant to get constructed. This is problem number two. Talon doesn't have $650 million. But again, the Biden administration might actually come to the rescue here, as there are numerous reports highlighting the importance of a U.S. supply chain. So it would not surprise me in the least if funding suddenly becomes available. Now, finally, I can start elaborating on the true value of the Tesla deal. You see, back at Tesla's battery day in 2020, Drew Baglino and Elon Musk unveiled their plan to streamline their raw material supply chain and remove inefficiencies. They specifically highlighted how they wanted to cut out the whole metal sulfate process, which was not needed for their requirements. They said it was complicated and they were not joking. I have tried to get my head around the steps involved and gave up. It is some serious heavy reading. But this slide here gives you some idea of how ludicrous the current process for creating nickel sulfate really is. It isn't just the steps that get taken. Just look how many countries it has to get shipped to before you get to the final product. Talon is tackling this problem with three different paths for the nickel supply chain. All of them branch off after the concentrate phase. One requires transport to a smelter, Canada, and the other two make use of a technique known as hydromet. I don't want to bore you on the detail, but this is a chemical process that doesn't require smelting. The output is either sulfate or powder, depending on the end customer need. Since Tesla wants powder, we can immediately remove the sulfate option from the plan until they decide to supply some other battery manufacturers, that is. Now, there is another refining technique Talon is considering, vapor metallurgy. And it would seem that this is designed for Tesla because the output is powder. So now we see why the Tesla deal is so important. It will define the refining strategy. Also, since the sulfate creation step is no longer needed, they will not need a $650 million plant. They will only need a $400 million plant, a figure that they have alluded to in their PEA. Okay, that doesn't really solve the funding problem, but it does shave $250 million off the asking price. So back to Talon Metals. The next step is a proper definitive feasibility study. Start to finish, if the pre-feasibility studies are done, this takes about a year. Then we'll have a proper assessment of the ore, the reserves, how much it will actually cost to build a plant, and what the cost price of extraction will be. This is also called a bankable feasibility study, and the name speaks for itself. Without this, we really don't have a hell of a lot to work on. If you have any doubts as to the importance of this step, just look at their own website. The little red circle there in the green block, that is a go, no go decision. Now let's talk money. Talon doesn't have any. They have around 30 million Canadian dollars, which is about what the bankable feasibility study will cost them. And they still need $10 million to buy the last 9% of their 60% stake from Rio Tinto. So they're about $400 million short on the initial CapEx forecast. Assuming, of course, that the feasibility study doesn't upwards revise the number, which is usually the case. And then, back to my original skepticism about the price at which Talon will be able to supply Tesla. The rumors were that it would be linked to the spot price on the London Metals Exchange. Now, I question this. Tesla is on a drive to reduce the nickel cost. And since Talon provides a path towards improved efficiency, it seems likely that the LME spot prices will not be in play. They said linked to the spot price. So possibly, I would say spot price, let's say 20% or something. There's also the small matter of the Rio Tinto stake in the mine, a 40% stake. Rio Tinto sold the remaining 60% to Talon over a period of three years in an overly complicated agreement. But the key point is that Rio will be required to put some cash up for the construction. The bottom line here, folks, is that before we can even work out the merits of this investment, Talon Metals needs to complete the bankable feasibility study a process they have not even started yet. Then at least we'll have a more accurate picture of the costs, reserves, margins, and capex requirements. But we will still have a long way to go before Talon breaks ground. They will need to raise funds, most likely from shareholders in the form of a rights issue, but maybe from a US government subsidy. And then they will need to go through all the permit processes, which we have already seen can be tricky. And they need to actually build the mine and the refinery. Until then, this stock is incredibly speculative. But if the resources and reserves pan out, along with Tesla and Talon's production techniques, then it is pretty cheap at only a $400 million market cap. But that is a lot of ifs and buts. 
And you should know there's a pretty good chance that you have a lot of dilution coming your way. And there is a greater than zero chance that the feasibility study bombs out and that your entire investment goes up in smoke overnight. If you're looking for ideas on lithium industry investment, then I recommend this video of mine in which I cover Livent, my top pick in the lithium mining sector. I also have my lithium production and demand tracking project, which you can find here. And if you subscribe to my channel, you should receive notification on future analysis of companies that stand to benefit from the EV and renewable energy revolution. Thank you so much for listening. And please hit the like button if you like this content. It goes a long way to supporting my channel.